Hi everyone, this video is going to cover registration essentials, so information and tools that may be helpful as you prepare for the upcoming registration period. This video is presented by University Advising in the Academic Resource Center. In this video, we'll be covering a few things. First, we'll take a look at prior to registering and look at some platforms and tools that you can utilize as you start to think about which classes um, you're planning to take next semester. The second part of this video will go over registering. So on your assigned registration date and time, we will help you look into logging onto the portal, what does the portal look like, and how to use the tools in the portal to help you successfully register for your courses. Lastly, um, we'll cover after registering. So how do you view your schedule, confirm the classes that you've registered for, as well as taking a look at how to add and drop classes, especially if you find that you need to make any swaps in your classes after the initial registration. We do want to review the registration timeline with you all. As you can see, the earliest registration date will be Friday, April 3rd for our students eligible for priority registration. Postgraduates will be Monday, April 6th. Seniors will be the following Monday, April 13th to accommodate for Easter weekend that's happening um, after postgraduate registration. Juniors will go April 15th, sophomores will begin April 17th, and freshmen will begin April 21st. Um, we must note that your assigned date and time is based on the number of hours you have earned at this university. So how many credit hours you have earned, not including the ones that you are currently in. Another change that we want to know is that this year, between the dates of June 5th and July 6th, all registration schedules will be locked to accommodate for incoming first-year registration. So as you think about registering, you are able to make changes to your registration, um, to your schedule in the registration interface up until June 5th, um, but then not again until July 6th, in which case it will open up on July 6th for you to continue making changes until um, the last day to add drop without a W. Let's take a look at prior to registering. The first resource we're going to talk about is the University Bulletin. And for those who are, of you who are unfamiliar, the University Bulletin is one of the most critical resources at the university because it does contain all the academic and administrative policies that kind of govern your enrollment here at the university. You can access the University Bulletin at bulletin.lmu.edu, and once you do so, it should take you to a page that looks like this. Now, amongst all the rules and policies, um, there is one important section that we want to point out um, to help you plan out your courses, and that's going to be this link called Academic Degrees and Programs. And when you click that link, it will actually bring you to a page that lists every single major and minor at LMU in alphabetical order by its college. Now, if you click on each of the links, um, you will find, especially for the majors, you know, objectives for that major, learning outcomes, uh, course requirements, lower division and upper division, but the most important resource that we want to highlight is the model four-year plan that is included in every single major here at LMU. And so we will use African American Studies as our example. And so if you click on it, it will take you to a page that, again, shows you the objectives, learning outcomes, lower and upper division. But if you keep scrolling down, it will send you to an African American Model Studies Model Four-Year Plan, um, which lists, you know, in order for the eight semesters, which courses you should be taking when. And, you know, even if you're not here for all four years or eight semesters, this is still a helpful planning tool, and we'll show you why next. Any course that is hyperlinked is a course that's required for your major, and if you click on that course, it should pull up with information about the course, you know, how many semester hours is it, what is it called, but it will also list, you know, does that course meet any core requirements so that you know right away, okay, in my major, I'm going to fulfill these core requirements. So those are core requirements that I don't need to um, look into fulfilling separately. In addition, it will list any prerequisites necessary for that course. Um, in this Black Community Engagement course, there are no prerequisites, but if there were, it would be listed in this section as well. Um, the reason prerequisites are important is because as you're thinking about what sequence you want to take your course in, you know, which order you want to take your courses in, you want to double check that, you know, which courses you need to take prior to taking other courses. So, you know, when you're thinking about next semester, I want to take a certain course, you want to check, well, you know, is there a prerequisite to the course and have I already met that? So this is also a helpful planning tool regardless of how many 
semesters you plan to spend at the university because it can help you kind of gather an understanding of, okay, these are the courses I can take together, but I have to take these courses before I move on. And so with that, um, we do find that the sample four-year plan is helpful um, regardless of whether you're here, you know, for eight semesters or not. Couple updates uh, or a couple things about the university bulletin. Uh, the first thing is that the university bulletin is updated every year. And this is important to note because as a student, you actually follow the university bulletin of the year in which you entered LMU or the year in which you declare your major. Now, for most of you, the year in which you enter LMU is the same year in which you declare your major because you declare your major once you enter the university. Um, for those of you who entered LMU this academic year and don't plan on changing your major, you're always gonna follow the 2019-2020 University Bulletin. For students who do end up changing their major down the road, just note that your university bulletin year will change depending on what year you officially change your major. And that's just because you are actually held to the rules and policies and procedures that are in place the year in which you start your program at LMU. Always check that your degree works matches the bulletin. Um, that, and we'll talk about degree works in the coming slides. And lastly, it's always a great idea to run your plans by your faculty or college advisor, kind of for final approval and making sure that um, all the courses you plan to take are in the right order and kind of can accommodate for um, any university core that are covered through your major or minor, um, etc. For those of you who are in BCLA, uh, the BCLA Advising Center has actually created nifty tools for you all um, that help put some of the model four-year plan information in the University Bulletin into just a much uh, more reader-friendly format. And so to get there, you want to log on to the website up top, which will take you to their general page. If you click tools to graduate and click that drop-down menu, you will see something called major worksheets and four-year plans. From there, if you click there, it will actually take you to a page that has all of the majors within BCLA as well as a sample major checklist. So it lists all the courses you need from the major as well as which courses in the major potentially cross over with core requirements. There is a sample for your plan that's kind of broken down into a nice grid. Um, and then if you are interested in any of the BCLA minors, there is a BCLA minor checklist as well. Now, similarly, the College of Fine Arts also has a similar type of resource. So again, using the website up top, if you click there, you'll also want to click their tools to graduate and expand that column. You will click the major worksheets and four-year plans. And from there, similar thing. There, It looks like there's some major uh, graduation plans, major overviews, and minor requirements for you to use. Again, this is the same information delivered in the University Bulletin, just in a much more reader-friendly format. Um, if you are not part of, if you are not a BCLA or a CFA student, again, the University Bulletin is the best resource for you to use in terms of thinking about um, which courses you need to take and at what point in your academic journey here at LMU. Furthermore, we want to share that the University Bulletin, again, is the official document um, for the university. So if you do have any questions or see some discrepancy in the tools that you're utilizing, please always refer back to the University Bulletin as that is the official document that the university goes off of and utilizes um, in terms of talking about university policies and procedures. The next resource we're going to talk about is Degree Works. For those of you who are not familiar with DegreeWorks, it is the official LMU degree audit, meaning it tracks all of your courses and requirements necessary for you to graduate. This includes minimum semester hours, core requirements, flag requirements, major requirements, if you choose to have a minor, any minor requirements, upper division units, it also tracks your cumulative GPA, your total semester hours, and is a helpful planning tool because you actually cannot graduate from LMU until degree work says you can. So I always encourage students to continuously check in on their degree works each semester to make sure everything um, looks as they expect it to. Um, this way, if you do see anything that's inconsistent or anything that you feel is inaccurate, you can bring up any issues with your college or your advisor to get those rectified before it comes time for you to apply to graduation. Always remember that only you are responsible for the accuracy of your degree works each semester. 
to log into DegreeWorks, you can log into MyLMU under the Academics tab. Under the Registration header, you'll see DegreeWorks there, so go ahead and click on it. And it will actually take you to your personal degree works page and it will list, you know, at the top part, all the general requirements that we just discussed. But then underneath each of them, it will break down in further detail each of the different requirements. So all the university core requirements and under that all the flag requirements, under that all your major requirements. If you have a minor, it'll list all the specific minor requirements as well as your upper division courses. I want to turn your attention down here to the legend. Um, any green check mark that you see means that you've successfully completed that course and requirement. Anything that's a blue squiggly line is a course that you're currently in progress with. Any courses that are not checked means you still need to complete those requirements. Um, I always tell students, you know, once you've registered for classes each semester, it's always good to double check degree works to make sure you see those blue squiggly lines populate on the classes you just registered for and making sure that they actually meet the requirements that you intend them to. Another feature of degree works is this is where you can locate your assigned advisor. All students are assigned an advisor upon entering the university. Usually this advisor is within their major, always within their college. This is the advisor you can contact in order to seek assistance with major specific courses, um, course sequencing, college requirements, etc. In order to contact the advisor, you can click their name and a contact email will generate. If you have problems with that, you can also search the person's name on LMU's homepage and it should pull up the directory which also should list their contact information as well. We'll go over how to locate which holds you have on your account later on, but something called an advisor hold can prevent you from registering. If you see that you have an advisor hold on your account, the person listed in DegreeWorks is the person who has the ability to remove the hold for you. We do encourage students, if they see that they have an advisor hold, to connect with their advisor listed in DegreeWorks as soon as possible to discuss any assistance that they may need moving forward and planning out their courses, but then also so that the advisor can lift the hold from the student's account so that the student can successfully register on their assigned date and time. For BCLA students, BCLA students, please make sure that you are, if you do have an advisor hold on your account, please make sure you are connecting with the advisor listed in DegreeWorks first. If you have trouble connecting with the advisor listed in DegreeWorks or you need additional assistance after meeting with them, BCLA students can then see an advisor within the General BCLA Advising Center. DegreeWorks is your class standing, found here. Your class standing, or classification, is dependent on the total earned hours that you have at the university, not including the hours you currently have in progress this semester. Your class standing, or classification, is calculated as follows. Anyone with 0 to 29 earned hours is considered a freshman. Anyone with 30 to 59 earned hours is considered a sophomore, 60 to 89 earned hours a junior, and anyone with 90 or more earned hours is considered a senior. Class standing can affect a few things, one being class eligibility. For example, if a class is restricted only to juniors and seniors, then only those with junior or senior standing in degree works, will successfully be able to register for the course in the registration interface. Transfer students, you may need to request a class standing override if you still have credits pending from your previous institution. Take the student above, for example. The student transferred 58 units and is classified as a sophomore. However, they are still missing transfer units from the previous institution for fall 2019. With those units, they would actually be classified as a junior. If the student wanted to take a course that was restricted to juniors and seniors only, they may be eligible to receive a class standing override from their assigned advisor. The rationale being that pending transfer credits, they would otherwise be classified as a junior. BCLA transfer students, if you find that this is the case for you, you can request a class standing override from the BCLA Advising Center. Another thing that class standing can affect is your assigned registration date and time. The more earned hours you have, the earlier your assigned registration date and time will be. These next two slides will be specific to transfer students or transfer units. Transfer students, please make sure that you are checking degree works to ensure that all your transfer work appears. If you submitted your transcripts recently, please make sure you track the status by checking back in in degree works. Transfer units must be reflected in degree works to demonstrate that the process of articulating them is complete. 
If you have not submitted any transcripts from previous institutions, please send those to the Registrar's Office ASAP. The transcripts do need to be official. You can track which courses are transfer courses by the designation TR as shown on this page. They can be listed under the core, your major minor requirements, or electives. Transfer students who entered in spring 2020, please make sure that you've submitted your fall 2019 transcripts from your previous institution to the Registrar's Office. For BCLA transfer students, you can follow up with the BCLA Advising Center if you've submitted your transcripts but do not see any changes in degree works in several weeks. The next thing to consider is prerequisite overrides. This applies to transfer students or students who have transferred courses to LMU. Transfer courses are indicated in two ways on degree works. Number one, by a general course replacement labeled with an XXX behind a number, for example, Math2XX. If this is a prerequisite course to something you wish to take, the registration interface will not recognize that you've met the prerequisite. You will need to obtain a prerequisite override for this from your assigned advisor, and we encourage you to do this before your assigned registration date and time so that you don't run into any issues when you, wanting, when you want to register for your desired course. Another way that transfer courses are indicated in degree works is by the actual course number. For example, HHSC 278. If there is an exact match between your last institution's course and an LMU course, you might see a transfer exact transfer coursework like this. This should give you no issues when registering as the prerequisite course number is exact. BCLA students, if you do find that you will need a prerequisite override given that the course that you transferred in does have that XXX and it is a prerequisite to a course you're trying to enroll in, please make sure that you're connecting with your faculty advisor, the advisor assigned to you on degree works to get that prerequisite override. Next, we're going to discuss how to browse for classes. So as you start to plan out which courses you want to take next semester, you just want to see which courses are actually being offered in fall 2020. To do this, you'll want to return to the registration interface main page and select browse courses. From there, select fall 2020 from the drop down menu, which will pull up the schedule of classes for fall 2020. You can search a few ways by subject or department, such as economics, mathematics, theology, biology. You can search by course number specifically. So if you're looking for like an economics 1050 course, you can use the course number function to filter that course specifically. You can search for keyword. You can use an advanced search to put further filters on your course. If you're looking for a course that's only offered on Tuesday, Thursdays. Um, one of the important search engines that we want to note here is going to be the course attribute search engine. This core attribute search engine will be used if you're looking for a course that fulfills one of the core curriculum requirements. For example, theological inquiry, historical analysis and perspectives, etc. You want to go ahead and type in what the core requirement or the core area is and it will start to pull up a list of all the core curriculum requirements. We want to note some abbreviations for you. Exploration courses. So anything with EXP is going to be one of the exploration courses, which includes creative experience, historical analysis and perspectives, nature of science, technology, and mathematics, as well as understanding human behavior. FND is going to stand for any of our foundational core requirement courses, including first-year seminar, rhetorical arts, quantitative reasoning, theological inquiry, philosophical inquiry, and or studies in American diversity. INT is going to stand for any of your integrations core courses, including faith and reason, ethics and justice, and our inter interdisciplinary connection. And lastly, if you see the abbreviation HNR, that's going to stand for courses in the honors program. So you can see here that there's going to be a theological inquiry for HNR and a theological inquiry that says FND. Unless you are in the honors program, do not click the HNR option as it will only populate courses that are specific to those in the honors program. Once you've selected kind of an area, it will pull up with a list of courses that look like this. A few things to note is you can actually expand the courses down here so you don't have to keep clicking the button so you can expand to have the list have more options. We also encourage students to click the specific course title and bring up some information about that course. So as you start to thinking about which courses to take, you'll want to always look at the class details. Notably, you'll want to write down, if this is a course you're interested in, the CRN number. The CRN number is a unique five-digit number that is specific to that course, section, time, and professor. 
This will also be the fastest way for you to register if you know your course's CRN number. Other things that this page will know is like the section number of the course, what subject or department it's in, the course number, title, and credit hours. Another area we want you to take note of is course attributes. So this is going to be any specific uh, course kind of uh, requirement that's going to be fulfilled by this course. Uh, most importantly, uh, the core curriculum requirements will be noted in this section. So if a course counts for a specific core requirement, you'll find that in this section. So always good to just double check to make sure, you know, you think you want to fulfill a studies in American diversity. Well, it looks like this course that you've chosen, if you click course attributes, if it does count for studies in American diversity, it will note it in this section. You'll always want to check if a course has certain restrictions. So with this, as we kind of talked about, um, certain courses can have restriction based on your major. So you need to be a bio major to access certain courses. Um, college, special populations, and as we spoke about earlier, years in school. Um, these are certain you know, parameters for restrictions in certain courses. Course prerequisites. So another area, the last thing you want to click is making sure that are there any prerequisites of this course that you need to be aware about. So um, any classes that you should have taken prior to enrolling in this course, and sometimes course prerequisites do have minimum grades. So if you see a course prerequisite, just make sure that you've met it. Um, and also, as we talked about a little earlier, you know, just make sure that you sometimes may be eligible for a prerequisite override for certain transfer courses. So keep that in mind as well. A tool that might be helpful for you to use is this worksheet that University Advising has created to help you think about um, which classes you want to take as well as kind of jot down the most important information that you need when starting to plan out your courses. Um, this grid is super helpful if you want to draft some courses and use it in preparation to meet with your faculty or college advisor so that you can have something to drive your conversation. Um, as you know, we noted, we do have a space for CRN numbers being kind of the fastest way that you can register on your date and time. Um, if you want access to this worksheet, uh, it is available on the University Advising website. To best get to it, you can Google Academic Resource Center LMU. Once you get into the Academic Resource Center page, you can click Services, University Advising, and it's housed under Advising Resources, Advising Tools as the registration worksheet. If you do have trouble finding it, um, you're welcome to send us an email. Our contact information will be listed at the end of this presentation. But again, you know, having some sort of grid or method for you to use to organize which classes you're thinking about taking is really important to just frame and get an understanding of your schedule or your, you know, ideal schedule moving into the next semester. Um, also, something to note is that during your registration date and time, you will be able to only register for up to 18 units without an override. And even getting an override, there are certain parameters as to who is eligible to do so based on, you know, policies of your college. So if you are interested in registering for more than 18 units, please talk to an academic advisor. Um, and they can help you sort out, you know, what the process would be within that certain college in getting that override um, if it is possible. On the back is also a grid that allows you to list out backup options. Again, we do recommend students have backup options because it's not always that we do land our ideal schedule. So in those cases, we want to make sure we have options so that we can quickly, you know, change out classes if needed on our registration date and time um, without having to take up much longer time than we anticipate needing to. In the second part of the video, we're going to be discussing registering for courses. So what actually happens on your actual registration date and time? What does it look like in the portal and kind of have an, how to navigate that interface? So with that, you want to go back to my LMU and find your way back to the registration interface, um, except this time you'll want to select register for classes. So when you try to select register for classes before you're assigned registration date and time, you won't get very far. But once your date and time hits um, or any time after, you can select fall 2020 as your term and it'll take you to a page that looks like this. As I mentioned earlier, using the CRN is going to be the fastest way for you to register. So you'll want to click that second tab here and you'll see a few CRN blank boxes pop up. You can use this add another CRN to create some more blank boxes until you have enough blank boxes to fill um, numbers in based on how many courses you plan to take. So for example, in this uh, case, if you have five courses, you would have five blank CRN numbers. You'll go ahead and 
input those five specific unique digits that we talked about uh, for each course. You'll want to add to summary. And what it does is then takes it to kind of puts it in your basket. You haven't quite registered for the course, but it gives you a second to look at, you know, how the course looks um, in comparison to each other. Make sure you don't have any courses that overlap. It lists the course down here. But most importantly, once everything looks good, you'll want to hit submit. When you hit submit, hopefully you'll get a signal that says save successful. All the gray hashed out will turn into bright beautiful colors you'll see the status is registered um, if you do note or if there's a reason you weren't able to register for a course it would note here in the top right hand corner why you weren't able to register and in that case hopefully you have some backup CRN you can just repeat that process add to summary submit and hopefully all is well but if you don't have backup CRNs you will have to go the long way and click this find classes button just like in Browse Classes, you can search by a red subject, course number, keyword, you can search by core attribute, you can do an advanced search, but regardless, it'll pull up a page with all the courses, just like in Browse Classes, but the only difference is that the status will give you the number of seats available in the course. We still recommend students to always click on the title, check for restrictions, prerequisites, course attributes, details. If everything looks good, you can go ahead and you know, make sure that there's enough seats in the class and click add. Once you click add, it will take you again to kind of that basket stage where you can see if the course fits with all the other courses you already have. But don't forget to always hit submit to make it official. And hopefully everything will turn into bright, beautiful colors and you'll see that your save was successful. Now, you can search again um, if you have additional courses you need to add, but that search again function will take you back to that original landing page with all the different uh, search engines. Now, uh, say there's a course that's all full, but there is a wait list. Note that not all courses do have wait lists, so um, please make sure that there is the word kind of wait list, kind of see where this time conflict is. If there were wait lists, you would see, you know, five of five waitlist seats available. I'll have a better example on the next slide. Um, but you'll want to use this action drop down menu to help you add yourself onto waitlist. And this is how you would do it. For example, beginning acting here, you see that the class is full, but there's nine of ten waitlists left. You'll want to notice that only the classes with waitlist will have this option. If a class doesn't have this kind of underneath waitlist option, it means the class does not have a waitlist seat available. So keep note of that. Say, you know, you want to add this beginning, you want to add yourself to the waitlist for this beginning acting class. Under this drop down menu, you'll want to select waitlist. You see it says pending here because you haven't quite added the class. You'll want to say waitlist like that, and you'll want to click submit. Once you click submit, you've been added to the waitlist. Keep note that for waitlist, you'll want to be checking your line mail regularly because when you are eligible to sign up for the course, meaning you've gotten off the waitlist, the registrar's office will notify you via your line mail um, that you are number one eligible to register for the class, but it'll also give you a time frame in which you can register for the course. If you take no action in that time frame, meaning you're not checking your line mail, you didn't notice it, it actually will time out and give it to the next person on the waitlist. So again, please note that if you are on the waitlist, please be checking your line mail regularly so that you are aware when you are off a waitlist so that you can go back into the system and make those changes. Um, we'll go over in the last section kind of how to swap out classes, but just some um, tools and tips for adding yourself onto wait lists. So in the last part of this presentation, we're going to cover what happens after you register and some things that you should consider as you move forward. So after registering, so say you're done registering, you've gotten all the classes you wanted to, awesome. You'll want to click the schedule and options and some thing to note is it'll pull up your schedule it'll kind of show you down on this bottom part how it looks you know visually um, there's also a button to email or print the schedule easily if you want to look at that option also after registering we do want to discuss what it looks like if you want to add drop classes for example if you got off a wait list or you just want to switch some classes around um, a couple notes is when you are adding and dropping classes keep in mind that you can only register for again up to 18 units maximum without an override but just note that this is why it's important to pay attention to this section because you can't just add classes, especially if it's going to push over your total limits above 18.
Um, and with that, you'll want to use this action menu if you're looking to switching courses. Um, so for example, if you got off a wait list or you just want to swap a course, you'll want to use this action uh, drop down menu over here. You will want to select the course that you want to register for. So whether it's getting off the wait list or adding the course, you'll want to make sure that the pending course is web register right here. But simultaneously, you'll want to say which course you want to web drop. You'll want to put these two things kind of together, indicate to the system, you know, which one you want to register for, which one you want to drop. And the most important thing that we want to note is in doing so, we want to make sure you push this button called conditional add drop. This conditional add drop button will say, look, we won't drop you from your current course unless you're successfully able to add the course that you want to. So it's kind of a safety net for you. Um, you'll want to click submit and hopefully that exchange will occur. Um, if the exchange doesn't occur, it will bounce back saying an error, but you'll still be in that original course. If you are only registered in say like 12 units, you can just add the course without worrying about this add drop situation. Really this kind of web register, web drop with the conditional add drop is only relevant if adding a course will kind of put you over your maximum unit count. So as we move to kind of online instruction for the rest of the semester, here are some resources for you to consider as um, you approach the advising period. Um, here are all the different college advising resources. Uh, please feel free to reach out to these folks to kind of get more information about major or college specific requirements, courses, questions that you might have. For us, University Advising, um, again, this video is brought to you by University Advising. We are general advisors for the entire campus. We are great at assisting you to give you any general information that you need. We can show you how to use platforms. We can help you prepare for meetings with your faculty or college advisor. You know, We're happy if you don't really know where to start or what questions to ask or how to narrow down your questions. We're happy to help you along the way. You're always uh, welcome to contact us as kind of a first point of reference. And then from there, we'll kind of figure out, you know, which college, which of your questions are specific to your college advisor, etc. If there are any questions, feel free to email us. Here is our contact information. Again, we are normally located in the Academic Resource Center in Dom Hell second floor, but given that online instruction is occurring, we are available um, through the advising email is probably the best way to contact us. If you do want to make an appointment with one of us just to discuss some general questions, you are welcome to through this Calendly link here. All of our instructions will be via Zoom for the remainder of the semester. Um, I hope this was informative and we hope that you have a wonderful and successful registration period.